Hello my friends and welcome back. It is episode 47. And before I forget, I am going to all this talk about uh, equipping uh, Argento with a heavy bolter. I just recently got some new weapons for our dude here. Ro Ro uh, Rotobi Pattern Plasma Pistol. Which is somehow better than the two-handed plasma gun. I guess the only thing that the plasma gun has going for it, the two-handed one, is the uh, range. But it's only an extra two spots. And of course, we bought ourselves a new... Uh, Omnisirax, which I'll equip in a second. Nine plus Psy rating, which is uh, like two. Hmm, interesting. Okay, where is it? There it is. C. Delphim Hatton Omnisire Axe. Man, the damage is way better. I almost get the feeling that, th that this guy is meant to be a melee character, or at least a mixture of the both. <clears throat> okay. Let's go. Nothing left to do here. This route is dangerous. Let's see what happens. Nothing happened.
there's an unknown ship right there. Could I... Could I win that fight in my weakened state? Let's just make a test save. <clears throat> I don't want to spend money repairing if I don't have to. But it's hard to know what the difficulty of these fights are going to be. This void ship will not be defeated. Okay, they got to go first. The void comes knocking. How am I taking so much damage through my shields? Yeah, I don't think I could uh I don't think I could win that fight even if I had full health. Oh, the latest Oh, good thing I made a save cuz it decided to save at the start of the battle. I'm going to suggest that what they're using is blast weapons. So, the shields are actually holding well. But if they always go first... they always go first, then I'm going to struggle to, uh, do much about them. Ugh. Control. 
Yeah, I ain't gonna win that one. I wouldn't even win that one if I had full health, I don't think. Okay, nothing there. We could have a look at this battle, just quickly. All stations, report when manned and ready. Eldari Shadow Hunter. Wow, it looks like for once there's enough distance between me and the enemy. I swear, like, these battles, you are always positioned in the absolute worst place. Like, I can't go this way because these guys... The, this is the perfect position to be against this. I can't go this way because then I've got these two behind me. And I can't break this way because these, these torpedoes are close enough that they would probably destroy me and he can just circle around the back. And I certainly can't go down the middle. Like this, this is uh, this is checkmate positioning right from the beginning. Instead of the battle starting, you know, with some distance between the two parties, you're started in such a way that the enemy has you in check and also gets the first turn. out of range.
fine. What else am I gonna do? Alright, one of my shots missed as well. As if I needed more problems. Out in pain. Wow. That was just a one shot. I thought, oh, that went really well, and then he shot me with his main gun and I just died instantly. Okay. Yeah, we are We are definitely not high enough level for this. But yeah, you are, uh, you are blatantly not given any room to maneuver in these fights. How come this planet has got something that definitely doesn't look correct on it? Well, we scanned it and there's nothing there. Tell me I just bumped into that fight. Enemy contact! Ugh. All hands make ready to unleash our fury. End it quick. We'll approach the planet from the other side. Yeah, even if I had full health, I don't think I could win these fights. The, uh... The amount of firepower is pretty impressive. Imagine if I wasn't using blast shields against these guys, they would have just torn me apart in seconds. That was probably the only thing that made it even competitive. We have received a transmission from Foulstone. Okay, this is the infamous Foulstone. 
sent by members of Orders of the Hammer. A transport vessel unloaded several thousand refugees from a planet belonging to the Road Traeger Winter Scale. The Order of the Hammer has judged this invasion to be an act of aggression and is asking for your Lordship's protection. Six score eleven days since the feast of the passing of Nicodes Keef, the champion of the faith. Disquietude marred the calm of the monastery of the Order of the Hammer. Countless tortured souls steeped in fear arrived on Foulstone in the Star Bark. A great apostasy, apostasy had a fall, befallen their home and turned them into abject wanderers seeking help and refuge. Their wicked and cruel captain. The owner of the Navica had betrayed them. Once they had made landfall on the world's surface, he most deviously recalled his shuttles and left, ridding himself of his duty to care for the unfortunate knot. The interlopers brought with them worldly futility and strife. Mayhap the seeds of alluring blasphemies. Prelate Hector. What is this name? Hectarchus. Hectarchus? Whatever. Recalled the first missionaries to set foot on Faustone's vast wasteland, led by their zeal for serving Saint Cognatus. Those missionaries have received the blessing of Nicomodes Keith, the champion of the faith, who had travelled with them in their starbark. Okay, brethren and sisters of the Order of the Hammer came forth to meet the strangers carrying water and protein victuals and medicinal herbs and jugs of Prometheum. When the crowd came to blows of reverends and blood was spilled built and many were trampled or mauled in the stampede, some of them dwellers of the monastery. With las guns and bolters they pierced the interlopers with chainsaws and power flails they struck them a great and bloody harvest was reaped that day. The monks fled beyond their walls and rang the vox alarum, shut the gate, commanded the armed guards to keep watch over that gate, slaying any who approached. The hungry and sick lay siege to the monastery, begging for help in their spite. They blocked the water collector and unpowered the genitorium. The faithful, in the meantime, made ready to resist. What did the blessed rogue trader do? I wonder what this arrow means. You will gain one people. <laughs> wow, you will gain profit factor 15. The hammer of epiphany, infernical. The accuser of sin. Profit factor 15, that's insane. Man, the temptations of heresy. 
<laughs> the strangers, prodigious in number, beseech the rogue trader to take them in and give them shelter and protection as his own servants. Despite they laying long have we wandered, swiftly have we fled. Without thy holy protection we are doomed. Fear annihilation at the hands of our kin who remained behind. Having fallen away from the sublime light of the emblem, they have descended into a bloody sedition and become murderers of no mercy. Ours a pure and secluded abode. By worldly futility we are untouched and so we wish to remain. Humbly the order of the hammer and heated the god emperor's confinement, unsealed the airlocks and opened the gate of its abode, brought forth gifts of virtue to relieve the suffering of the ill stricken. After a prayer, the architect set to work in accord with the state's teachings and parameters set forward the standard template construct. They erected spacious living quarters and sturdy fort walls for the planetary militia and a spacious auditorium wherein trade and store goods, and a proud sensorium which these war clerks and servo bondsmen would maintain order and keep statistical records. And a new yet righteous way of life came to Foulstone, and the people rejoiced. And all was good. Wow. We just ripped that straight out of the Christian Bible. <laughs> That's almost heresy. That's almost real world heresy. Wow, Shield of Faith plus 30% to the Prow Shield Sector. Sure, why not? Selling of forgiveness of the ecclesiarchy can be a significant source of revenue, my god. More real world heresy. <laughs>
Bonfires of Righteousness. All allies gain three times allies' dogmatic rank percentage critical hit chance. Wow, that's nice. You can manage your colonies remotely. How do you know how much time has passed? Or how long this even takes? No idea, but I guess we're moving on from this world because, uh... I cannot win those fights. So I guess there's nothing more to be said or done. Mission to report, Lord Captain. Keep receiving messages about stray be strange behaviours in certain ship systems. All decks report on controllable opening and closing of doors, gates, and airlocks. They behave erratically and do not obey the operator's commands. Regrettably, this led to casualties amongst the crew. The tech have explained these phenomena are being caused by machine spirits. Irrecrossibility. <laughs> Whoa, there's a word. Spent several hours chanting litanies to soothe their anger. Let's go into the space dust! The magnetic storm raging above the planet burrs the gaze of auger arrays. Only the truly powerful diviner machines may see through the currents of electromagnetic fluctuations in their blessed vigil and discover the mysteries of this emperor forsaken planet. Ruins of an ancient imperial city were discovered on a dead world completely deprived of an ecosystem. According to the reports, the entire settlement is contained in a titanic glass dome that once held an artificial atmosphere. Your augurs detected the framework of three other similar structures that were never completed. For whatever reason, the dome systems fails, failed and left behind the city, a ghost that never managed to become a proper colony of the Imperium. Okay, shall we, uh, what should we do? Blessed Bolter Casing. Single attacks with Bolter weapons automatically hit the target. Wow. There's a sweet item for, uh, Argenta.
people flooded the city like a tidal wave, filled building after building, bunkhouse after bunkhouse, and receded from its quiet streets just as quickly. Several trips to discover the massive Promethean storage tanks in your vessel. The, co the crew grimly points out the colony was running out of fuel, had little life support. A lavishly decorated estate of the local ruler towers over rows of featureless bunkhouses. <clears throat> Several explorers per perished from cleverly hidden tripwires in the courtyard, but after losing their companions, the team easily disarmed the remaining traps in the estate. Anything of value was promptly delivered to the rogue trader's vessel. The Lord Captain was even given an exquisite sword from a secret cache. Ow, it's a power weapon. Sword. Alright. Easy looting. This looks like a Necron tomb world. Two plaster seal. Uh, let's leave that one. I only have one extractum left, and uh, two plaster steel is not a lot, unless there's some contract that I could fulfill like immediately. Okay, I don't think there's anything else to do here. We have stripped this position bare. Lord Captain, a hasty report the disturbing news brought to me by the machine spirits of the ship. The matter is extremely delicate and concerns Lady Cassia. first incident occurred immediately after our departure. Lady Navigator chastised one of the ship's runners, after which he went to his living quarters, killed his family, and then shot himself. The second incident was noted while traversing the warp. Navy Lady Navigator gave the pilots the wrong instructions, and the void ship was thrown off course for a matter of minutes. This was enough for the forces of the Immaterium to anger the machine spirits enough for them to start a fire in the service bay. After that, officers living near the Lady Navigator's quarters began to express Extreme emotions, hysteria, apathy, euphoria, rage is quite detrimental to crew morale and performance. Around 100 living birds were delivered on board during our stay in footfall. Each bird cost a hefty sum. I have failed to discover their purpose and subsequent fate. I was also told about a conflict between the Lady Navigator and the Seneschal, alas, with no details. Things are even worse with Jay Hedari. I intercepted a Vox cast in which she promised she would, and I quote, end that Kasha if she ever saw her again. The Lady Navigator's state of mind worries me. She's self contained and does not mesh with the crew at all. Which I fear is why everyone avoids her. Even senior officers can be superstitious.
Okay. I got six points of Navigator's Insight. I wonder if I could stabilize the routes of the Imperium. That would be interesting. But I guess first things first, we need to deal with Cassia. She's easily my most powerful character, so we don't want to lose her. <laughs> Words cannot describe. Not here. I'm begging you. Aren't noblemen supposed to discuss such things away from the servants? Then lead the way. Oh, I met the willpower test because I am a psyker myself. What is it you want to talk about, Lord Captain? I have nothing to say to your unfounded accusations about my conflict with the crew. Kind young man with a shy smile and skillful fingers with too much rotten ochre on his shoulders. Grew tired of the disgusting colour and advised him to lighten this burden by casting the weight off his shoulders. He did not come the next day or ever again. I saw something in the warp, something vast, predatory, shimming with indescribable colours. It came from nowhere and stared at the ship with hundreds of hungry eyes right there in our path. I decided to change course while it was still possible, but did not want to sow panic. Would it be better to tell the crew we were heading straight towards a monster's gaping maw? I already told you I cannot control my abilities. What else do you want from me? Will I be assigned a Fariah chaperone or will you put me in suppressing shackles? Mind tell you what you need a hundred species of bird and what you use them for. Admittedly, I'm a lost myself. The area of football is better request to a ship's quartermaster and ask me if you can get me a songbird. You never asked for clarification. Shortly after I left, I had countless number of cages delivered to me, all wrapped in bright red panic with flickering tints of fear. And there was a bird in every one. <clears throat> I was so excited I thought I'd have a hundred friends instead of one. They were squeak squeaking so piteously that I let the poor things out and even fed them my breakfast and dinner. <laughs> the, the birds just enacted uh, the Lord of the Flies <laughs> in her bedroom. <laughs> If anyone's ever been forced to read that book. Will you share your thoughts with me? My... We have a wall of choices here. Uh, and uh, unusually they're all like massive. So I'm kind of blocking some of them. Whereas normally they're quite short. My crew has good reason to fear you. You are a monster. From now on I forbid you to leave your chambers. You're a kind soul but of difficulty reaching out to people. I could teach you the art of communication. You've done terrible things but have not presumed to lecture a person of noble blood. Woes dog your foot, your steps. But we will find a way to defeat them, I promise. Everyone who has dared to slander you will be punished. There is nothing reprehensible about your actions. Uh... That you have a kind soul but have difficulty reaching out to people, I could teach you the art of communication if you like. Do not mistake me, I was not going to accuse you, I think it's just that you are the most worthy interlocutor on the entire ship and you're always so busy. I read a treatise by Pius de Mobius very recently who claimed that subjects would never believe their new ruler was better than the old one unless the old one had been a tyrant, no matter the circumstances. <laughs> Forgive me, I was looking in your eyes and completely forgot your question. Uh, there's a persuasion check.
I suppose I should go with the Imperium Law check. Look at the size of this choice. Your interpretation of the classical text is not entirely, entirely correct. If subjects have grown accustomed to the ruling house, then all the sovereign must do is refrain from breaching long-standing traditions. Adjust unwanted laws as gradually as you would shift the bed on a f of a flooded river, and no one will ever take your power from you. Indeed, I was not wrong about your merits or your ability to hold a conversation. I hope my second question does not confound you either. The other one was just like, people can be bought for money, which is true, and a very American answer to the question. According to the 20 tomes penned by preacher Ostach Eifen, the forgotten mercy and cruelty go through the world hand in hand, but people flock only to one pan of the scales. Would you rather inspire fear in your followers or be monogamous and choose ore? I am not afraid of embracing reputation for ruthlessness. I would exercise restraint and lenience in my actions. One must be a tyrant, a friend, and a jester to one's subjects. What matters is to clearly discern which role is required at a given moment. I most agree with this one. I guess. For 40k, anyway. There is so much power in your words, power that makes you want to join you, understand why your subjects are eager to follow you. I admit I was afraid we were too different, yet you helped me realize that I can be candid with you. I must confess that sometimes I can hardly bear the burden the house has placed upon me. I feel I am not doing my best. How can you bear the responsibility for billions of lives day after day and not stoop under all the weight? <clears throat> it is not always easy, but I try to leave my dynasty towards prosperity by a worthy means. It's my duty whether I like it or not, and everything serves me. Wahahaha. Ha, ha. I'll go with that first one. There's uh, still nothing to do here. Lord Captain. Okay, I'm going to say that that's it for now because we're out of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.